Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube, Instagram, however you're catching us. It is Thursday morning, May 20th. Waiting for the notifications here for the live to go off and some people to start joining us. I know I'm a little earlier than normal. Uh, it's about 6.40 um, a.m. on Thursday morning. And we're going to talk about soft-shell crab information today. Soft-shell crab season is among us. Um, it's here. Um, the official kickoff um, is just a couple days away for the Chesapeake. Um, so my notification for live just went out. So hopefully some people start joining us. Um, if you like soft-shell crabs, there's going to be some great information for you. It's going to uh, give you some information that you probably didn't know about soft-shell crabs. Um, some cool stuff. I love I love sort of this these fun facts um, about food and wine. So... Um, I love sharing all that kind of stuff because a lot of people don't really realize how our food is made um, or grown or harvested or produced. So just going to sh shed some fun facts about that. Um, so just waiting for some people to log on so I can start giving the goods here. If you're watching live, then drop a comment, hashtag live. If it's on the replay, hashtag replay. If you're on YouTube, uh, of course, drop a comment on YouTube and say hello. And um, if you like soft shell crabs, uh, this video is for you. So, um, and even if you don't like soft shell crab, there's going to be some interesting information. Um, so, good morning to everybody starting to tune in. I'm a little earlier than normal. Um, I've been trying lately to get to my office at 6 a.m. and get some work done. If I can get my work done from between 6 and 9, um, I can. Uh, I can have an easy day, a much easier day. And then when Courtney comes into the office, um, everything's set up for her, and she can rock and roll with her work. So good morning, Jennifer. So a little earlier than normal, um, but uh, let's see here. So hopefully you can hear me. I'm using this new microphone setup here. Um, that's exciting because the sound is better when it's working properly. So, all right, so soft-shell crabs. <clears throat> um, soft-shell crabs are a, are a delicacy uh, made from the blue crab, the blue swimming crab. Uh, the blue swimming crab goes all the way from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up up the coast here, um, in through Maryland and up in through New Jersey. You get the, the blue crab. And crabs are, um, crab is a favorite, uh, one of those favorite seafoods. Uh, Maryland has really made... Maryland has really made the crab famous, right? Chesapeake Bay has really um, done a great job in marketing the crab. However, 70% of the crab production comes from Louisiana, believe it or not. Louisiana is the biggest crab-producing state. Um, that's because warmer water's down there, of course. Uh, crabs like warmer waters. And I'm going to talk about the molting of crabs today and soft-shell crabs and how they're, how they're made. So good morning, everybody tuning in. Just drop a comment. Let me know that you're here, that you're listening. If you're a soft-shell crab fan... And this is a really good good video for you. Um, so just drop a comment if you are a soft shell crab fan. I love soft shell crabs, um, and there's a specific season for them. Um, the season is open. Um, the season starts um, late March in New, in uh, Louisiana, and then works it works its way up the coast. As the waters start to warm, the crabs start molting. So, excuse me. Um, the crabs will the crabs will start molting. So here's what happens. You really don't catch a soft-shell crab out in the wild. Um, when soft-shell crabs molt, when the blue crab molts, they become very weak. Um, <clears throat> they become extremely weak, and you don't want to put them in a trap and, 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 and get them and, and move them around and harvest them out, out, of the, out of the wild. It's just not an ideal situation. So you have uh, molting molting trays they're like fiberglass trays that, that, that the crabs are all put into um the average crabber will have at least or soft shell producer will have at minimum four trays because you need to catch them along the stages so it's four eight sixteen right whatever you need you need about four to make this work um so when you catch the crabs in the wild and you trap the crabs in the wild there's a way like on the i guess it's the fin um on the back part of the, of the little round fin um or flap um it, they, you can tell by that by by the line on it. They, they call them red liners, um, and you can see as these colors change and the color gets darker, that definition the outside. The closer the crab is to molting, so you can actually predict when the crab is going to molt. Literally, you can predict it within within four hours. It gets down to, 
but you can separate them out day, a couple days ahead of time, three, four days ahead of time. Now, you could, you could catch crabs and say, I'm going to take all these crabs and make soft-shell crabs with them. Some could be a month out. It's not suggested that they do this. And here's why. Because when the crab the crabs get stressed out when they're in these when they're in these trays and tanks. They're not in there, they're not in their wild, they're not eating like they should be. They get stressed out and they get all all the way down the point to where they're gonna get them ready to molt and they die. They just don't have enough nutrition, they don't have enough energy. They get to all this whole point and there's a high mortality rate in crabs to begin with, and especially at this stage. So the crab the crab crabbers catch the crabs. Now, if they see that back little fin there, I don't know what's what it's called, if it's a fin or something back there, but if they see that line there and they see it getting close to molting, they're, if, if they're within a week of molting, three, four days of molting, they immediately, that crabber immediately doubled his value of that crab. The soft shell crab is at least double the value. So they want these crabs, right? But if the crab isn't that way, the crab's going to get sold as a, as a regular hard shell crab. And go to market that way. But if they got these ones that are that are they're called redliners, they're getting close to a redliner or a redliner. Their 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 value just skyrocketed, just doubled. So then it goes to indoor buildings, and they go they 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 go between these four tanks and they monitor them as as they get closer. They move tank to tank to tank. Now crab season happens, molting crabs happen because the crab needs to outgrow its shell. A crab will molt naturally in its lifetime 20 to 25 times. So what happens is the, the crab all of a sudden starts absorbing excess water, which bulges, which bulges the flesh and pops the shell free is how that works. So you can even see bottoms of the shell where they start to start cracking. Like the day before, you'll see the shell start cracking. And that's when like these crabs like go into this monitoring tank where they're monitored literally every few hours. And I'll, I'll explain that in a couple minutes. So the crabs, um, the crabs molt 20 to 25 times naturally in their lifetime um, if they can make it that, that far. Because once they molt, they're very vulnerable. They're weak crabs. They're very vulnerable. And um, other crabs will eat them, actually. Crabs are cannibalistic. And other crabs will eat them. And I'll talk about that. Um, this, is, this, is, this, is the, this is the main reason why you have to have so many tanks and move the crabs along. Because crabs are cannibalistic, and they will see somebody in their community molting, and they'll actually, especially when they're confined in a tank, uh, cannibalize and eat the other crab. So this is why they have to be monitored very often um, when they get down to the point where they're really getting ready to molt the day before. So they move through these series of tanks. Um, they want to get them within a few days when they catch them of molting. If not, they go they go to go to regular reg, regular crab um, crab market um, for hard shells. When the crab gets that last stage where they know it's going to molt within the next 24 hours, that crab is monitored every six to four four to six hours. The closer it gets, the closer the monitoring. As soon as the crab molts, sheds its skin, it needs to come out of the water. Because if it stays in the water, the new shell starts growing. If it gets pulled out out of the water and goes into refrigeration, the shell will not grow anymore. So they have to literally get this within four hours of shedding. So crabs molt at nighttime. And this is why the traditional season for soft shell crabs um, happens the first full moon in May because you would be outside crabbing and the moon would light up the bay and you could actually see the crabs molting. So traditionally, gee, I think an order's here. Let me just double check. Is here an order? No, no order. No order. It's a garbage truck. So the um, in the Chesapeake, which the first full moon um, is the 25th of this month of May. So crabbers would go out, and that would be the official beginning of the season uh, because you could actually see uh, see the crabs from the moonlight in the bay, and they were easier to harvest. So crabs molt at night. As soon as it gets dark, that's when they start molting. Um, and I believe it's probably a defense mechanism for them, right, because they don't want to be seen by other predators and things like that. So they burrow themselves down into, you know, a, a burrow, and they, they do their thing, and they molt. Literally, if the crab lives that day, that the full day, the shell's growing back. So the, the producer has to actually monitor 
the what like if you're if you're a soft shell crab crab producer, you have somebody working throughout the course of the night. If you're a small guy, you only have four tanks. Somebody every four hours is checking the tanks and segregating the crabs and getting them out as they molt. If you're a larger operation, right, you're just somebody's just sitting there all night um, harvesting crabs out of, out, of, out of all these fiberglass tanks. So the crabs are harvested, they're put into refrigeration ASAP, and the shell will not grow. If it literally goes four to six hours, the crab, they basically the, 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 loses all of its value. So it's a very, very closely monitored uh, uh, molting uh, of, of the crab. And um, so 70% comes from Louisiana. Louisiana, you've been able to buy them for the last, since, since the end of March, they went on the market. Um, Maryland is will be now coming into season. Uh, there might be some Maryland stuff out on the market right now, but really the official kickoff of the season is the first full moon of May, which is later this year. It's the 25th. And, um, and yeah, so soft shell crabs. So if you've got any soft shell crabs, I know a friend who got some soft shell crabs back in April. And those definitely came from the Louisiana area. But as the waters warm up, the warmer the water gets, the more they're going to molt. So it's a part of the process of growing. Warmer water makes the crabs grow. It's their season. Um, they're eating more. And that's simply what happens. So the peak of the season um, or the season starts in end of March and goes all the way until September, uh, sometimes until the beginning of October. And um, like I said, Louisiana makes produces 70% of the soft shells. Um, it is ideal to, for me as a restaurant owner, as a chef, to buy them frozen. Um, to buy them frozen for me is the best because when they pick them, catch them, process them, um, harvest them, um, they can actually freeze them. A lot of chefs will buy soft shell crabs alive still or close to alive. It's a very, very extremely perishable product. When you get, and I bought many, many, for many, many years at the country clubs and everywhere I worked, the restaurants, we bought lot so-called live soft shell crabs but always in a dozen you have one dead one stinking one one that one that contaminates the whole box and makes the whole box just stink disgustingly um and sometimes it's a chore to find that one crab because that's they're, they're they're very 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 perishable um and they've started decomposing and it's just it's like oh there's always one like really just nasty one in there that you can't use when you buy frozen ones Obviously, they go right into processing, and they have no time to for, uh, decomposing, and they say fresher than fresh. I talked about a little fresh versus frozen yesterday on my Facebook Live. So that's the story with that. Um, frozen is best. Now, beware. Consumer beware. If you are going to the grocery store um, or to, like, a food service place like like um, Restaurant Cheapo, Restaurant Depot, uh, you're going to be able to walk in there and buy crabs that are from all through Asia, soft shell crabs. When you go to a sushi restaurant and you're buying the spider roll, 95% of the time that's going to be something farmed out of Asia, produced out of Asia. Uh, a lot of them come out of the Mekong Delta. The Mekong Delta is one of the dirtiest waterways in the world, very polluted. People live on top of it. They don't have proper plumbing. Uh, their bathrooms basically just drop out of pipe into the waterways. They're out there swimming in it. They're raising fish in this. They're using this water for to bring it into the ponds that are right next to the Mekong River, the Delta. Um, just Google Mekong Delta. Let's show, you'll see some images. It is a not-so-nice waterway, and a lot of crabs come out of that area. Um, they're farmed and raised all throughout. I mean, the, the, this crab is, is from all over all over the world. So a lot of these are going to be products of those parts of Asia. So buyer beware, especially if you're in a sushi restaurant. That's where they're coming from. Um, they are a lot cheaper for restaurants, for chefs, a ton cheaper. Uh, we have to um, special order from a distributor, Maryland soft shells uh, that are frozen. And we can't even get them right now because the season's really not officially kicked in yet to get production up. So we're just waiting now any time for these to be available. And hopefully, um, we were told, we've been monitoring uh, all of April. Hopefully, by the end of by the, uh, all of May, by the end of May, beginning of June, we'll be able to um, get our regular source from Christfield, Maryland. Christfield, Maryland has all the crab festivals, all the crab information. If you really want to get in-depth with the blue crab, the soft-shell crab, and crabbing, go to Christfield, Maryland. It is like the epicenter of the crab culture. Uh, in the Chesapeake Bay, Crisfield, Maryland. Those are where the most famous crabs come from. 
Um, they do a great job marketing, just like the Copper River does a great job in Alaska. The famous salmon come from Copper River. Famous crabs come from Crisfield, Maryland. That's um, every chef's dream to say, hey, I got Crisfield crabs on our menu. So we usually get Crisfield crabs, um, Crisfield Crab Company. Um, so we're just waiting for those to be officially packed and processed and shipped and put into a warehouse. And we'll have that as soon as that is ready. Um, so hopefully that helps you with your soft shell crab purchasing. Um, and if you are a soft shell crab lover, um, enjoy some good soft shell crabs this summer. But I mean, just drop me a comment. Um, if you are a crab lover, just drop a comment that you are a crab lover. That'd be awesome. Uh, it is May 20th right now and pretty early in the morning. It's about seven o'clock. I'm going to uh, get back to work here. I've got a solid two hours of work to do until before Courtney comes in. Jamie, did you get your juice? Okay. No, I didn't drink it yet. You didn't drink it? Okay. I made fresh grapefruit juice for Jamie. She was work she's got done working out. So she works out early. What time do you start working out? Five thirty? Five thirty. Five thirty. She takes a class online. So she was up early working out. And um all right folks, have an amazing day, amazing weekend. It's supposed to be nice this weekend, right, Jamie? It's supposed to be beautiful. The garden will be open. Our garden's open, yep. Fire pit'll be on. So, all right, everybody, have an amazing day, and we'll talk to you later.